Oh, he's so happy! After five years! Oh, no. Hey everybody, welcome back to Popcorn Roulette. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow us on Instagram for early access to our reactions. My name is Jonathan and award season is upon us. It's kind of crazy how quickly it snuck up on us. And so we're gonna do a series of some films, uh, some nominees and winners that we have not seen before. And so today we're gonna be watching Brokeback Mountain, the 2005 film. It was nominated for best picture it won Best Director uh, Director for Ang Lee. It won Best Adapted Screenplay, Best Score. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, Heath Ledger, and Michelle Williams were all nominated for their roles. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to getting into it. I uh, know this was kind of a cultural craze when it first came out, so I can't wait to check it out. I, as you can see, I'm kind of uh, cosplaying for it. Uh, just so happened to have a mustache for a role that I was doing. I just perfect for this film, so. Uh, I am super excited to watch this film. If you'd like to see the full watch along, don't forget to hop over to our Patreon where you can see all of our full watch alongs. Who wouldn't want to do that? So go ahead and uh, join us over there on Patreon. And without further ado, let's get into the movie. Oh yeah, Universal, baby. I think it's my favorite intro song, studio intro song. The little jingle. Whoever did this jingle, nailed it. For uh, those of you watching, watch along with me for the first time, go ahead and drop your favorite studio intro theme. River Road Entertainment with the Dope River. Is it Universal? Is it Paramount? Is it uh, MGM? I got my Western Thematic coffee mug. A tractor driving out in the middle of the day, middle of the night, all alone out in the frontier country of the United States. Acoustic guitar playing to give us some ambiance. And Heath Ledger jumps out of the truck passenger side with his lunch bag going off to work. We are in Signal, Wyoming. Big Sky Country, True Country Tang, on a guitar. <laughs> right, Heath Ledger, struggling cowboy, it looks like, living in a trailer. I don't know, if, for those of you who have not been out west, it is absolutely stunning. It's a whole different world from the East Coast. Having a tough time when we're driving that truck right now. All right, you're just driving the truck in on this shot. Don't need for, oh, it's broken, got it. Here we go, here's the meat cute. Awkward shuffling, can't look him in the eye. Okay, seductive lean. I like the contrast in their denim colors. Like Heath Ledger cops out of the truck in like this light blue like I'm wearing, like all denim up underneath that jacket. And Jake Gyllenhaal hops out with this like deep royal like blue, still all denim. Here, Deuce is looking for work. I suggest you get your scrawny asses in here pronto. About to say, hasn't been a line spoken yet. <laughs> the first line of this movie is, if you pair Deuce is looking for work. <laughs> Tinder, stay in the main camp where the Forest Service says, but the herder He's gonna pitch a pup tent on the QT with the sheep, and he's gonna sleep there. You eat your supper and breakfast in camp, but you sleep with the sheep, 100%. No fire, don't leave no sign. You roll up that tent every morning in case the Forest Service snoops around. Hmm. No. It's interesting how awkward they're being with each other already. Friday's at noon to be down at the bridge, your grocery list and mules. Tomorrow morning we'll truck you up to the jump off. <laughs> He's like, get out of here without even saying it. All right, are they gonna speak to each other? I mean, obviously they are. Jack Twit. Damn it. All right. 
Get get a job, go drink. <laughs> Are you from ranch people? Yeah, what? Hmm. Do your folks run you off? Yeah, they run themselves off. There was uh, one curve in the road in 43 miles, and they missed it. The bank took the ranch, and the brother and sister, they raised me mostly. Dang, dude. That sucks. Like the contrast in personality. So this kid, like, obviously was comes from a little bit more money, went on the rodeo, cowboy. Didn't work out, now he's just working jobs you can find. Only thing? And you got him, who's just super shy. Super shy, quiet, doesn't talk much. Comes from tragedy, you know. God, that is beautiful. Jeez. See how blue that water was? The dog is working. Sheepdogs are so fascinating. God, they're so smart and they know exactly what they're doing. It's wild. It was just in New Zealand and we went to a sheep farm and they did this whole cool like demonstration of how they work. It's incredible. All right, they're working together. I wanna take horseback riding lessons. That'd be so cool. This would also be scary, like in the middle of the wilderness where there's like wolves and bears and mountain lions and the dude's like, no fire. I'm an amigo. We'll be getting married when I come down off this mountain. Had to stay with the sheep, no fire bullshit. You already got no right making us do something against the rules. That's interesting. So I guess the, like, the, um... <laughs> the, uh, the fire he saw was probably like the forest service or I guess just the hikers and he just got jealous that's interesting because he he's talked a couple times about being on the rodeo and was like no Bronco's gonna throw me off and that look they gave us was really interesting here's next week thought you didn't eat soup yeah I'm sick of beans too early in the summer to be sick of beans <laughs> God, that is so wild like in 1963 I guess 1963 in the middle of Wyoming. I guess it would make sense there being like supply runners like that. Uh -oh. It's just black bear. You got this. Oh, that would suck. All the supplies. No. Oh, that would be so terrible. That would also be a nightmare for, for, for him. Because dude's the supply guy, and he's the sheep guy. What's he gonna do? He's gonna leave the sheep there to go find him? Goddamn horse spook, and the mules took off, and scattered food everywhere. Beans about all we got left. No whiskey or something? <laughs> we have to guard the sheep, not eat them. What's the matter with you? There are thousands of them. Oh, sick of beans. Sick of beans. Oh, wow, so they really are gonna shoot one. Oh, no. <gasps> An elk! Out of your dumbass missing. <laughs> what to do with this? Catch with my elk. Dang, elk's huge. That's so much food. I bet that would be awesome. After days like of freaking beans, fresh elk meat. Oh my god, that must be awesome. Spend half the night checking for damn coyotes. Gary got no right to make me do this. Yeah, let's see. You want to switch? I wouldn't mind sleeping out there. That ain't the point. The point is, we both ought to be in this camp. That ain't the point. Alright, let's see how this goes. The switch up. You can get bored. Oh, they got spuds. I wonder the time. I can, I'm imagining there's a big gap of time happening between each one of these shots. Maybe not a big gap of time, but like days, maybe. Well, my old man is a bull rider. Oh, well, he kept his secrets to himself. Never taught me a thing. Never once come see me ride. Daddy issues. My sis left, married a roughneck, moved to Casper. Me and my brother, we we went and got ourselves from work on a ranch up near Warland. Till I was 19. And then he got married. No more room for me. Oh. <laughs> That's how come uh, me to end up here. That's smile about, friend. Man, that's more words than you spoke in the past two weeks. Hell, that's the most I've spoken in a year. <laughs> My dad, he, he was a fine roper. Didn't rodeo much, though. He thought rodeo cowboys was all... 
His like physical acting is pretty incredible. Waving to the girls in the stands. He's kicking me to high heaven. But he don't dash for me no Oh my god, that's a cool shot. This is a cool little slow burn that's very effective in showing their characters. A kind of more, a more fleshed out version of their characters. Especially that moment where he's like, you just talked more than you have in two weeks. So it has been a kind of a, all these cuts have added up to two weeks. I will say there's more, um, Jill and Hall's character has basically just been himself the whole time. And so we'll see how his development changes. Now Monica don't sound quite right either. I see it got kind of flat on that mare stray. Oh, you said that mare couldn't throw you. She got lucky. Yeah, well, if I got lucky, that harmonica would have broken too. <laughs> no, I shall meet you on that final day. Water walking Jesus, take me away. They're getting more comfortable with each other, growing closer. Now the bond is kind of accelerating. They're getting closer and closer and closer. Well, I damn, it's too late. No, let him cheat. Yes. <laughs> They're drunk. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's shivering. Body temperature. Yes. What? Well, Get in here. <laughs> A drunken night of passion, perhaps? Anyway, Heath Ledger's body acting is pretty incredible. Like, you can tell he's his whole essence is a character. The way he's holding his coffee, the way he's kind of like very closed in, the way he's like very... Is this early? It was a drunken night of passion. Listen, if Jake Gyllenhaal's character has never done this before, that's gonna hurt in the morning. What do you do in that situation? It's like you've been like, you spent the last three weeks together. You've obviously grown closer and closer and closer. There's a bond forming and then you just both, you have sex. What's that conversation like the next day? <laughs> and it's an awkward one. Lost one. That's actually really incredible. Like, symbolism is a bad word, because there's nothing wrong with what they did. But, like, the fact that the night that they made love for the first time, a sheep died. It's kind of like a wild little thing to have happen in the story. There might not be any, you know, any deep underlying thing other than that. It's like, well, he wasn't there that night, so he couldn't stop the sheep. But I just think you know, sometimes filmmakers add, add little imagery into moments like that. Again, to be clear, there's nothing wrong with what they did. They love each other and they can, or are starting to love each other and show that love any way they want. The one shot thing we got going on here. Oh, no. It's nobody's business but ours. True. Me neither. Hmm. God, I imagine it'd be so confusing too. Cause I'm sure in the cultures that they like gr grew up in, homosexuality is probably same sex anything is probably super frowned upon. Oh, look how shy he is. And then he's like, no, it's okay. Don't be shy. Oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah. 
that it, oh, it's all right. <laughs> uh oh. Your Uncle Harold's in the hospital with pneumonia. Bad news. There ain't nothing I can do about it up here, I guess. No, there's not much you can do about it down there, <laughs> What a great point. Oh no, hail. That's sh oh, that's bad. Well, what are we supposed to do now, huh? Get on in there and untangle them chalet sheep out of ours. I oh no, two herds. That's the goddamn pink brand you wore off. Uh, well, we gotta try. At least we can do is get the cattle out for Gary. Yeah, Gary! <laughs> What if we need to work for him again, huh? You think of that? We gotta stick this out, Jack. <laughs> How does that happen? How do you not see, like, oh, there's another giant herd of sheep over there. Let's not do that. Oh, now we're in winter. That's not good. Bring them down. Why? It's the middle of August. It says there's a storm coming. So is that something... Cutting us out a whole month's pay. I'll spare you a loan, bud, if you're short on cash. Give it to you when we get the signal. I don't need your money, huh? You know, I ain't in the poorhouse. Shit. Shit. <laughs> that, oh, man, that would also be interesting, because you're, like, you're with a person you love, clearly care about. You've, like, you're in this reality up here in the wilderness. And he even mentioned he's going to marry somebody when he gets back off the mountain. So when you go back to that life, what do you... What do you do? You obviously love him. You may still love her. Oh wow, he's like actually fighting. What? Ennis, what's going on, man? Speak your words. Don't close up again, Enos. You just opened up. Yeah, this beautiful, like, you know, flower opening up, blossoming moment, you know, over the last two weeks. Don't close up again. Well, I'm gonna start and talk with Southern, with like Will, country accent. Ranch stiffs. He ain't never no good. So they still had some of the Chilean ones mixed in, and one of the names they went up with. You gonna do this again next summer? Like I said, me and I was getting married in November. So, uh, trying to get something on the ranch, I guess. I might be back. The army don't get me. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll see you around, huh? <laughs> Great. Come on, Enos! Speak your feelings, man! He clearly wants to continue being in your life. And you're like, I don't know how to express myself. Which, I get it. It's difficult. Especially in a confusing time when you don't understand why am I in love with this person? I didn't think I was gay. Again, a lot of cultural pressure. He's got married, you know what I mean? So I understand, it's just... What the f*** are you looking at? Ah! Oh, bud. Dude just broke down on the side of the road. He could've just... Oh, man. Under the powers vested in me, I now pronounce you man. Oh, he married her. Give me a kiss of brag. And if you don't, I will. <laughs> <laughs> what did he just say? <laughs> that was so awkward. So, he's gonna have started to move on, he's married her, and he's gonna run into, uh... <laughs> Into Jack. I think it's Jack. Bad with names. Oh. There he is. There's lover boy. Back next summer. Go back up on the on the mountain. Ain't got no work for you. Mr. Mar ain't been around, has he? 
Boy, I sure found a way to make the time pass up there. You guys wasn't getting paid to leave the dogs babysit the sheep while you stem the roads. Jeez. Now get the hell out of my trailer. Yeah, that would suck. Y'all thought it thought it was your your moment together. It's y'all's like secret, you know, this beautiful summer. And turns out this guy knew. That sucks. That would suck to find out. No, oh, buddies. Seems like a good dad though. He just seems like this simple guy who just wants a simple life. And I think, you know. When he saw what he had with him, he may have been super in love with, with Jake John Hall's character, but it's like, it's so foreign to everything he knew what a simple life looked like, and he ran to the simple life. It makes sense. Right in town, it's too hot. Jim plays in Riverton over the laundromat. I like kids for the girls to play with. I'm not so lonely like you were raised. Maybe he just doesn't want to be in town where? Mmm. Wow. He did the same thing like he did to him. But hey, at least he's back on the rodeo circuit. That's cool. This gotta be it. 1966. Three years now. I want to keep it down. I got two little girls here. Uh oh. What about it? You want to lose my half of teeth? Huh? Not tonight, bud. I sure rather not. Oh my god. He just kicked the crap out of that guy. That was a shot right there. With the fireworks in the background, that was incredible. But you can tell Enos is angry. He's just like a. An ang. He has this anger in him. I do like that they had his character go back to the rodeo. I think that's cool. Wait, Anne Hathaway's in this movie? What the crap? Anybody else know Anne Hathaway was in this movie? Why don't you tell me? Come on, man. Yeah, come on, dude. And a baby, let's go! Good for him. Lorraine Newsom, dad sells farm equipment. I mean, big farm equipment. $100,000 tractors, shit like that. He's still getting over Eunice. You've been waiting for a cowboy tonight, we call. Anyone's gonna love you. <laughs> That's a good line. What are you waiting for, cowboy? Mate and call. Oh, she is smitten. This is a super complex story. Man, this is great. They do so much without any lines. It's pretty unbelievable. That shot was incredible. So they're making eye contact. He's got this big smile on his face. We have this cut where you can only see the back of her head and it shows the other side and he's miserable. I don't think I'm too fast, do you? Fast or slow, I just like the direction you're going. <laughs> That's also a good line, holy smokes! Fast or slow, I like the direction you're going. Probably be my job if I lose it. What about my job? Great question. Oh no. Oh boy. Okay. Monroe, I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's okay, Alma. Oh. I'll get it. Alma, come with me. Watch your feet. Alma. <gasps> wait, wait. Now they wait. <laughs> 
backseat of the car where I left him. Rodeo Vito. His nickname is Rodeo. He calls his son-in-law Rodeo. I remember back on the mountain, I was talking about his character development has didn't like wasn't really progressing. He was just the loud, arrogant kind of. Now it has. It seems pretty clear he's like moved on with his life without actually moving on from him and that summer on the mountain. Hey. He seems to have done a better job. Is he somebody you cowboyed with or what? No, Jackie Rodeo's mostly. We was fishing buddies. He lied. <gasps> you bet. That's all he said is you bet. <laughs> Perfect response, honestly. He lied about how they met. Very suspicious. Oh, he's so happy. After five years. Oh no. Oh, that'd be devastating. Holy crap, those two love the crap out of each other. Me and Jack, we're gonna head out and get ourselves a drink. She's like, Fair enough. Please make it, ma'am. She's like, yeah, sure. Why didn't he just get in the truck with him? God, this poor woman, she didn't do anything wrong. Well, he's from Texas. Texans don't drink coffee? No, oh, man, this is so messed. See you Sunday, ladies. I mean, I truly, oh God. I do believe he loves her in the way that he does. I truly believe Jack loves his wife in the way that he can. Why didn't he just get in the truck with him after that summer? I was just sending up a pair of things. You were. You forget to bring that harmonica. <laughs> There were these two old guys ranched up together down home. They found Earl dead in an irrigation ditch. Took a tire iron to him, <sighs> spurred him up, and drug him around by his till it pulled off. Jesus. My daddy, he, he made sure me and my brother seen it. Hell, for all I know, he done the job. And that's why he... Every four years? Wait, well, if you can't fix it, Jack, you got a standard. Oh, God. You know I ain't for this one. The fear's got hold of him, man. That sucks because his trauma as a kid, specifically around this. Well, you take care of it. Alma! Come on, communicate! Tell him you made a mistake then. Alma! Come on, communicate. Tell her you cheated on her. The girls need a push or something. <laughs> Yo, look how old they are. Whoa, this movie is going. He's got to tell her that he cheated on her with the love of his life. And she needs to tell him that she saw him. She's going to throw it away. my blue parka. Look at his sideburns. Last time I seen it, he was in it. Day we had that big ice cream. <gasps> Holy crap, this is going along. She's got gray hair. Going up there, two, three, two, three. <laughs> I love how she's not suspicious at all. It's just boys going to hang out, and then you got his wife who saw it. And they still haven't talked about it. Years later. <laughs> Forgetting something? Kissing her. Not kissing her. Man, that sucks. I mean, Jack's right. 
what kind of life? They have no love together. They're just two people, complete strangers right now, after that. Living separately in the same house. They live like completely different lives. Both miserable, because they've denied this from themselves. Oh. Maybe not miserable, but not as happy as they could have been. If they just, I don't know, Ran away to California together, or you know, back back in the beginning of this. Easier said than done, obviously. But. Oh my lord! I was about to say, I'm like, oh, they're they're still making love. Defendant is ordered to pay child support to plaintiff in the sum of one hundred and twenty-five dollars per month for each of the minor children until they reach the age of 18 years. Delmar divorce granted this sixth day of November, 1975. Holy crap. He's in a great mood. He's going to see, <laughs> going to see his guy. There's Alma Jr. and Jenny. Hey. There I go. Hi. Oh my gosh. I guess I, I thought that this means you. Jack, uh... Oh, come on, man! Yeah, I got the girls this weekend, and, uh... I'm sure to sell sorry. I'll see you next month, then. Oh, no! It's just miscommunication, because he can't... He doesn't know how to communicate still. You could have said in your postcard, Hey, the divorce is a thing, but I got my girls this weekend. Because he was like, I can spend the rest of my life with my man! Jeez! Dude, cry, man. Cry. You just thought everything you've you've been you just thought everything you have been hoping for since the day the first broke back mountain trip ended was about to happen. You drive from Texas to Wyoming and without like with a punch to the gut, he's like, "Sorry, dude. I know. Sorry, bro." It's like, "Oh god, just cry it out, man. This is the problem." Whenever there's like issues in relationships, just talk about it. Problems are always like fester when you just don't communicate, man. Even in the marriages. Well, he's doing a better job in his marriage, but in the other marriage, if they talked about it, they either would have been divorced earlier or they could have worked it out. Was that a man of the night? Was that a male prostitute? You don't eat your dinner. I'm going to have to turn off that television. Why, Mama? I'm going to be in this room for the next two weeks. Look at that TV. Hail. <clears throat> Boy, she watched football. No, flip out. This is your home. Yeah, that's right. Not he finished eating a meal that his mama took three hours to Oh. Sit down, you old son of a... That's for Come on, baby! My child and you are my guest. And you sit down before I knock your ignorant ass in the next week. Oh, she loved that. <laughs> that might be my favorite part of this entire movie so far. <laughs> that a boy, Jack. I kind of want to rewind that. Did she marry the grocery store guy? She married the grocery store guy? <laughs> Oh my god! There you go. Come on. You, now you're divorced. You can, now you can at least be honest. You didn't go up there to fish. You and him. <laughs> you don't know nothing about it. Get out! Get out! Elma? Oh my gosh. Bye! Whew! That was a lot of years of pent up frustration on her part. I hope you can see where the, where the snow melted on the engine block. Watch where you're going. Uh oh, uh oh. What? Dude, and en it's what you doing, man? This is what happens when you don't deal with your anger. I mean, Ennis is in pain, man. Like, that's why he's so angry, because he's 
in pain all the time. He is constantly uncomfortable. He's in pain. He's angry. He's frustrated. Easily irritable. Every moment in every scene that is not this. Which is like this beautiful tragedy. You ever get the feeling when you're in town and someone looks at you, suspicious? He's still thinking about when he was a kid, man. Sure, maybe you can convince Alma to let you and Lorena adopt the girls. And we can just live together herding sheep. You want to live your miserable life and go oh, right ahead. Fun. I was just thinking out loud. Yep, you're a real thinker there. <laughs> He's just a crotchety, angry old man. They are doing a, a, a good job at um, aging them. Like the sideburns are doing a lot to make it realize like, oh, these guys are like older. These guys are... They went from being young 20-year-old guys to like now they're in the... Oh my gosh, her! Even like the way uh, Jack is dressing, his wardrobe's changing enough to be like, okay, he's used to money now. He's got a nicer hat than he used to have. You know what I mean? <laughs> Again, if only it was this easy. In actuality. <laughs> This cast is crazy. Uh oh. Did you see that look? I told Randall we ought to take the car. Oh, she is a talker. We ought to go down there some weekend. Drink a little whiskey, fish some, get away, you know? Oh, boy. I was spending more than I made. More than Randall ever will make. We come out here thinking that Ransom was still big ass. <sighs> behind the times. The dichotomy between his life and the other life is pretty... Jack seems more in touch with the, the um, same-sex urge, if that makes sense. Like, he's, he's kind of accepted that about himself. He's obviously the love of his life, but, like, he's accepted that part of him, but is also, like, ex assimilated into his life better. It seems like he hasn't either of those things. Maybe he's not the marrying kind. Wait, that's his daughter? Don't think I'm the one for him. Mm -hmm. You don't say much, but you get your point across. I still can't tell how much of his like crotchetiness is just him being crotchety and how much of it is because he's like denied the happiest part of himself. You know what I mean? But yeah, we are, this movie is m just moving timeline wise. He's got adult children now or later teenage children anyway. Daddy, I was thinking, what with a new baby and all, Mom and Rob and awful strict on me. More on me and Jenny, even. Maybe I could come stay with you. You know I ain't set up for that. I won't ever be home. I'm not saying that I it's wouldn't. Right, I understand. Oh, but. Bye, sweetheart. No. <laughs> he does love his daughters, obviously. He's just, you know. Going to snow tonight for sure. Who's he with? Okay, good. <laughs> I was like, if he's with the other guy. What? Well, you get shot by Lorene or the oh, husband yeah. each time I slip off the stair. <laughs> Yeah, you probably deserve it. You lied. The truth is, sometimes I miss you so much I can hardly stand it. Holy shit. That's the sweetest thing I've ever seen. Look at the tent now. That's how much time has passed <laughs> and how their lives have changed. They had that canvas tent in 1963 and now they got, you know, newfangled. If I can get Don Rose cabin again, we had a good time that year, didn't we? There's never enough time, never enough. Come on, Jack, stand up for yourself. You know, friend, this is a goddamn an unsatisfactory situation. <laughs> you forget what it's like being broke all the time. You ever hear a child support? That's fair. And I'll say it just once. Go ahead. Tell you what, we could have had a good life together. Real good life. Come on, Jack. You didn't want it, Ennis. What we got now is broke back mouth. You are too much for me, Ennis. 
son. <laughs> Wish I knew how to quit you. Then why don't you? Come on. Because of you, Jack, that I'm like this. I'm nothing. I'm, I'm nowhere. Stop me! Come on, Ennis. Jeez, dude. Holy crap! On a stick. Hmm. Wow. Oh, that's the same spot. Why'd that just click for me? That that's the same. There's, it's all developed and paved because it's been 20 years. Oh my gosh. Well, at least they finally like had it out with each other. That's a conversation they should have had. God, the communication relationships. Jeez. Miss Elmore? Where you been? And it's come on, dude. Well, looks like I got a message in any case. Carl? Carl's nice. <laughs> he even talks. He even talks. I don't get you, Ennis Elmore. Don't worry, he doesn't either. That's probably no fun anyway. She clearly loves you! Girls don't fall in love with fun. That's three people whose hearts you've broken because you can't communicate, man. Ugh. It's breaking my heart. All he has to do is just talk about what he's feeling. And I understand it's difficult. I understand the difficulty of all the situations. With Jack, because of the fear that was instilled with him as a kid. Then the other two... Jack was pumping up a flat on the truck out on the back road when the tire blew up. The rim of the tire slammed into his face, broke his nose. By the time somebody come along, he was only 39 years old. Hello? Hello? No. He used to say he wanted his ashes scattered on Brokeback Mountain. There might be some pretend place where a bluebird sang and there's a whiskey spring. <sighs> Is this folks still up in Lightning Flat? Jack, the day they die. <sighs> Poor guy, man. Immediately. This is so heartbreaking. <laughs> my God, my, my heart. <laughs> oh. <sighs> I'm a broken person right now. Wow, that house is very white, and it looks like a time capsule back to the 1950s. When was the Dust Bowl? The 30s? I come by to say that you want me to take his ashes up there on broke back, like his wife said he wanted to. Come on. In his still more, he used to say, I'm gonna bring him up here one of these days, and we'll lick this damn ranch into shape. Who of you was gonna move up here, build a cabin, help run the place? I get this room like it was when he was a boy. I think he appreciated that. Mm. You are welcome to go up to his room if you want. Yeah. Oh my God, this is so. There's a lot. A lot is happening. Like his parents live in the 1890s and. His dad clearly knows what's going on and doesn't like it. And his mom's like, is, is being kind and like almost treating him like a grieving, grieving loved one, which he is. He, his dad is just like he said, can please that man if you, you know. Come on, let him take his ashes. Come on. That's the only way this movie ends. Come on. That's his shirt. He didn't let you went and got his shirt. Oh my God. He said, I can't believe I left my shirt up there and Jack had it. Oh, it's so <laughs> heartbreaking, man. And beautiful all at the same time. This is a stunning tragedy, this film. We got a family plot. He's going in it. You can come back and see us again. 
Oh, I love her. It's like the beginning of the film. He's standing there with a hook, with a brown bag in his hand. It's the first time he saw him. And that shot was like the same lighting and sound. My God. My God. Oh, that symmetry is stunning. Whoa! Hey, Daddy. Look at his daughter go! Is she moving in with him? Like the car? That's crazy. I, I cannot imagine. Well, I thought you were seeing uh, Troy. Troy? Daddy, that was two years ago. They can't be that much different in age in real life. I don't know what he's doing. I'm seeing Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> what does Kurt do? Still talking to the ex-boyfriend. Oh, what's the occasion? Mama died. Or something. You mean Kurt? We're getting married. A much better occasion than someone dying. The wedding will be June 5th at the Methodist Church. Jenny will be singing, and Monroe is going to cater the reception. Come on, be there for her, man. I was hoping you'd be there. Uh, I think I'm supposed to be uh, on the roundup down near the T. Oh, my God. Always the roundup, dude. Always the roundup. Open up. I reckon they can find themselves a new cowboy. A little girl. Getting married. There you go. Huh? We have character development, baby. <laughs> He's holding it up real nice. Her sweater. She was right there in front of you, man, for 20 years. Jack, I swear. Those were wedding vows, weren't they? <laughs> oh my god. Oh. oh, that was a beautiful movie. That was a beautiful movie. That that was oh my god. It's oh, there's so much to talk about in this movie. The 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 the, the, the symmetry of the film opens in that like dark like morning early early morning light dawn light of the truck driving he gets out and he's got the brown bag in his hand tan jacket and then his chapter with jack ends when he gets the shirts they're put in the brown bag he's walking out of the house he's got the brown bag in his hand and then he drives away in that same in that same early morning dawn light and those are like the chat his chapters with jack were book ended now like it was it was over oh and jack kept his shirt he said, I can't believe I left my shirt up there and Jack had it the whole time. Oh my God, the, the heartbreak of for 20 years, Jack went back to Brokeback with him every year, hoping that this is the time, hoping this is the time that he, you know, there was one moment for Jack when he gets divorced and he's like, this is when we're gonna spend the rest of our lives together. And it's like, man, what could have happened if there was no trauma for Enos when he was a child. When after that summer and broke back, they just ran away together. And then when you get married, ugh, it's just, ugh, that, they did a great job of showing that struggle for both of them. Jack being like ready to go. He'd be like at any moment, he's ready to go. And then Enos is like, well, I've, I've accepted my life. This is my life. And he's just holding back his feelings, holding back his feelings until it was too late, which is like this heartbreaking thing. But out of that, out of that heartbreak for losing Jack and not being able to be with him, we have that moment with his daughter where his excuse for not being there for somebody every time has been he's got the roundup, he can't quit his job, he needs his job. And then finally, the character development of, you know what, they can find another cowboy. I'm gonna be there for you. Finally, he's gonna be there for somebody he loves. Oh, it's beautiful, man. It's beautiful. It's heartbreaking and it's beautiful and it's, there's so much soul and heart in this film and life and, and humanity. It's crazy. I love, my favorite part of, film the best part of it is the humanity and it's like this is all this film is is oh god the music was great you can tell why the three of them were were nominated for for their performances you could see why this was nominated by for so many things yeah it was just amazing um i think i could 
as always, talk for a million years about this. But if if I left anything out about this movie that you loved, any any imagery, symmetry, things that I missed, uh, drop your favorite uh, moment down in the comments. <clears throat> and as always, if you would like to watch the full watch along of this film, um, hop on over to our Patreon and you can watch the full movie with me there. Um, but yeah, thank you all for hanging out uh, at the start of, of uh, award season with us and just check out uh, more of our reactions of past nominees and winners. And we'll see you next time on Popcorn Roulette. Bye.